Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem majority element. I probably should have solved this problem earlier, but don't let the tag fool you. It's easy because the simple solution is actually easy to implement, but there is a follow up that's not very easy to come up with. So we're given an array of nums of size n and we want to return the majority element and the majority element is defined as being the element that appears in more than half of the array. So for example, we have four elements. Let's say we're given an array of four elements. That means there's guaranteed to be a majority element, an element that appears in more than half of the array. So in this case, there has to be an element, let's say it's one that appears for three values in this this array. It could even appear in every single value possibly, but not necessarily. So we could have, let's say, a two in the last position. So in this case, we would return one as the majority element. So the easy way to solve this problem is basically implement it as if we were finding the most common element in the input array. But to actually solve the follow-up question, we will have to leverage the fact that it's the majority element, not just the most common element. But for now, let's focus on the simple solution. We're given some values. We want to know what's the most common value. The best way to do that is to count the occurrences of each value. What's the best data structure to do that. Sometimes you can use an array, but if you're given arbitrary values, like these values could be in any range, let's say, the best way to do it is with a hash map. The reason we're using a hash map is because we can have any key value. We can use any integer that could be in the nums array as the key value. And uh, the value in this case is going to be the count of each number. So n is going to be mapped to the count. And we can uh, do this operation. Any operation on a hash map is an O of one time operation. So uh, we can count the occurrences of each value in big O of n time just by iterating through the entire input array. But the downside is that the memory complexity is also going to be big O of n because we are using a data structure, a hash map. So this solution is pretty straightforward to code up if you're familiar with hash maps. So let's get into it. But let's keep in mind that there is a better solution which is also linear time, but uses less memory. Okay, let's code up the hash map solution first. So let's create a hash map. Let's just call it count. We're gonna count the occurrences of each value. And let's at the same time, uh, keep track of what the max value is so far. So we're gonna have a result variable, which is gonna keep track of uh, whatever the max value is. Let's initially set it to zero and the max count of that result value. And this result is really just the candidate. We don't know that it is the result until we finally go through every single value in the input array. So for n in nums, so you can think of the result as like a, the candidate for being the result. So for each value, we want to update its count. So this n value, uh, we want to increment its count by one. So we can do that like this in Python, one plus whatever the current count happens to be. If n has not already been inserted into our hash map, we can return a default value of zero uh, like this in Python. And possibly the, the count of this value uh, could be bigger than our max count right now, right? If count is greater than our current max count, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to update the result. We want to set the result equal to n because clearly its count is greater than our max count. So then we can set it to n. But if that's not the case, if the max count is equal or even greater than the count of n, then we can leave our result as it is currently. So result can stay assigned to the result. And similarly, if we wanna keep our result updated, we should probably keep our max count updated as well. The max count is always gonna be the count of whatever the result happens to be because the max count is always gonna be set to the max of the current count of whatever value we're looking at n and whatever the max count already was. So that's the entire code. Last thing we have left to do is actually return whatever the result was and let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, it's pretty efficient, but there is one improvement that we can make to our solution and that is uh, getting rid of the hash map. And just to let you know, it is kind of difficult to come up with this algorithm that I'm gonna show you. It's actually named after, it's like an academic algorithm that's named after people, uh, Boyer-Moore algorithm. So don't feel too bad if you weren't able to come up with it yourself, but it actually is very easy and simple to implement once you know it. Let's just take this array on the right. 
what if we just tried to maintain one max and not use a hash map? Would that work out for us? Well, we'd look at the first value, one. So we've seen a single one so far. So it's our max currently. And then we see a two value. So now there's a single two value. So these two are tied for what the max is. Well, two variables isn't so bad, that's doable, but there could be a ton of values in the input array. Next, we see a two value. So there are two two values. Next, we see a three. So now we gotta start keeping track of threes because three might become the maximum. Now there's two threes in here. So these two are tied for what the max is. So maybe we're not even looking at the one anymore, but then there's two more ones. So there becomes three ones and then one becomes the maximum. It's not possible if we're, if we're counting the occurrences of every single value to keep track of what the max is. Uh, but the good thing here is we are guaranteed that there's going to be a majority element, meaning that take this array, for example, there's going to be a value that appears in more than half of the array. So we could have four threes in an array of size seven. And that fact that if, that one number in here is going to appear in more than half of the array is essential for us to solve this problem in O of one space with linear time. The idea that we're going to use is going to be similar to what I talked about a moment ago. We are going to keep track of what the maximum is, and we're going to do that with just a single variable. So we're going to take the first element in this case, it's a two. So we're going to set our result equal to two, and we're going to keep track of the count of what the result is. So far, we've only seen a single two. So we're going to say our count is equal to one. So next we visit the second value, it's also a two. So the obvious thing to do here is just to increment our count because the result is the exact same. So now our count is gonna be two, same result. Next we see a one value. So what's the intuitive thing to do here? Well, this is the first one that we're seeing. We don't necessarily know that, but we know that our result currently is two. It occurs two times, the count of it is two. So we might see a bunch more ones. One might be the majority element. How will we know that two is not the majority element anymore and it's been overtaken by some other number? Well, we can, every time we see a value that's not two, that's not our current result, we can decrement the count. And once the count becomes zero, and at that point we will know that maybe this is not the result because we've seen an equal number of twos as we've seen other numbers. Therefore, it might not be the majority element. And the important thing is what is gonna be the result at the end of the array. So let's continue with the algorithm for now. If you don't quite understand it, I think you will by the time we are finished with this. So we see a one, now we're gonna decrement our count by one. So now our count is gonna go down to one. We saw a value that wasn't the result. Now we see another one value. So we're gonna do the same thing, decrement our count now to zero. Right at this point, we don't know if this is actually the result anymore because the count of it is zero. That means so far in the array, at this point, we've only seen four values, but this is definitely not the majority element in the first four values. But let's continue. We don't know what's gonna happen. We see another one value. Well, at this point, we've seen more ones than we've seen twos, and we kind of know that because our count right now is equal to zero. So we can go ahead and decrement this by one again, which will put us at negative one, but that doesn't really tell us anything about this result. That just tells us that this value occurs less than half of the time in the first five elements of the array because its count is negative one. So, a better thing to do would be to actually reassign the result. So now the result is no longer going to be two because its count is already zero and we found a value that's not equal to two. We found a one. So we're actually going to set the result now to be one and we're actually going to update the count now to, to be plus one. So meaning this value one uh, has a count of one and all that means is that this might be the majority element. And right now we know that actually in the first five elements, this is the majority element. One is the majority element, but you're probably wondering, it could have been different, right? 
We only looked at the first five values so far. Two of them were twos, three of them were ones. But what if the last one over here wasn't actually a one? What if it was actually a three, right? You might be thinking, well, isn't this algorithm wrong then? Because in that case, our result, our count would have still been one, but our result actually would have been set to three, and what if the algorithm stopped here? What if these two values didn't actually exist? Then we would end up returning three as the majority element. Isn't that wrong? Well, yes, you're right, that is wrong, but what's also wrong is actually the input array. Take a look at this array. We have a two, a two, a one, a one, and a three. This array actually does not have a majority element, right? And that's what this algorithm depends on. There has to be a majority element. So you might have a lot of questions, but trust me, this algorithm does work and we'll explain a little bit more at the end. So at this point, we've reached uh, this two value over here. So what are we going to do? Uh, it's not equal to the result and our count is not zero at this point. So what we're actually going to do is decrement this by one. So now our count is to zero. So what that tells us is this one does not occur a majority of the time in the first six elements. Next, we see the last two. And since our count is zero and the two value is different from our current result, we're actually going to update the result right now, set it to two and increment the count and set that equal to one. And at this point, we have finished the entire array. Our result is two, so we're gonna end up returning two. So we actually got the correct value. That is the majority element in this array. But you might just be wondering, how exactly did it work? It kind of feels like magic. Maybe there are some test cases where it won't work. And I'll tell you that as long as the test cases are valid, as long as there exists a majority element, this is always going to work. And if you have a hard time seeing why exactly that is, try just taking this example array where two is the majority element and one is the non-majority, but these ones could be anything. It could be, you know, some value like three, or it could even be multiple values, right? It could be a three, a four, or a five. It could be anything. But think about it like this. You could rearrange these twos any way you want, and the algorithm will still work. You can try it. You could have alternating twos and then the non-majority element, right? Something like this. And in this case, we'd say, okay, plus one to two, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, right? At that point, we'd see two is the majority element. It occurs a majority of the time. We could swap these around. We could front load the non-majority elements, right? We could have a one, a one, and then have some twos. And we'd say, okay, minus two plus three, because we know that the majority element occurs more often than the rest of the array combined, right? So we'd see that this is the majority. You might start to see kind of why, right? This is the intuition behind it because it occurs more than half of the time. That's very important. That's why this algorithm works. Now let's code it up. It's pretty easy to code. So this is our original solution where we used extra memory and the hash map, but let's code up the more optimal solution. We're gonna be keeping track of two variables similarly as last time, the result and the count. We're not gonna call it max count this time because it's gonna be going up and down, but we are still gonna go through every single value in the input. And remember, to the count, we are gonna increment it by one if the end value that we're looking at is the same as the result, but we're gonna decrement it if it's not the same. So we can use like a ternary operator, at least in Python, it's nice and easy to write. So we'll add one if n is equal to the result, else we will add a negative one, basically subtracting one from the count. That's all we're doing with this line. But what we remember is if the count is equal to zero, uh, which it actually is initially, what we're gonna do is set the n value to the result. So if count is equal to zero, then we're gonna set the result equal to n. Now we're doing it like this for two reasons. One, initially we set the result to zero, right? We're just doing that as a default value, right? We don't know what the actual result, the actual majority element is gonna be. So as soon as this loop executes, it's gonna see that the count is zero. So we're gonna set the first element equal to the majority element. And after that, the main algorithm is also gonna start you know, to execute, it's gonna count. And then if we ever see that the count has gone down, first it'll be, it'll increment to positive one, but if it ever gets back down to zero, then again, we're gonna update the result. And as I showed a moment ago, we're pretty much guaranteed by the end of this that the majority element will be set to the result and that's what we can return. So let's run it to make sure that it works. 
And as you can see, it does, and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.